Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an audience with Harry Hill. And now, here he is, the floppy collared crown prince of dance, Harry Hill. Welcome. <laughs> it's nice to see one or two bald men in the audience. Welcome, mm, the bald man. Mm. All right, baldy. Hey. Mm. All right, baldy. Mm. Four eyes. Mm. Mm. Four eyes. Baldy. Four eyes. Mm, what a weird-looking bunch. Mm. Mm. Did you get my list? Did you get my list? Hey, baldy. Mm. Was it the same for you, sir? Was it the same for you? You just noticed it was taking longer and longer to wash your face. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> flannels not lasting as long as they should, am I right? <laughs> oh, I don't know where the flannels are going. <laughs> well, my old dad, he always used to say to me, black sky at night, night. <laughs> black sky in the morning, I've woken up at night again. <laughs> I've woken up at night. <laughs> Acupuncture's good, isn't it? For some things, acupuncture, uh, uh, but not for pins and needles. No, not for, <laughs> no, not for, not for pins and needles. Uh, mm, you like the lining, don't you? You like the lining. Mm? It dazzles, it excites. Uh, <laughs> uh, I found out this week that my mum has got false teeth. Yeah, she's got false teeth, so how can I believe a single word that she tells me? <laughs> <laughs> Shake it, sh 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 shake it like a Polaroid picture. <laughs> a little bit of fun, what you can do, right, you go down the butchers, right, you get the biggest piece of fat you can find, right, you take it down the park, right, you run after one of the joggers, hmm, oi, this fell off. <laughs> <laughs> might be important, might be. <laughs> what is it about people who repair shoes that makes them so good at cutting keys, though, eh? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Goldfinger. <laughs> now, uh, uh, but you know, thinking about it, I think I was too young for that job in the post office. Yeah, thinking back now, I think perhaps I was a little too young for that job in the post office. We used to sit there, sorting all the letters, listening to Radio One, and every time the music stopped, I'd open a parcel. Hello. <laughs> hey, a pair of shoes. <laughs> a pair of shoes. And a key, please, the familiar phrase. <laughs> a pair of shoes and a key. And a trophy. Why not? A trophy. <laughs> but why? Why do they put the little tiny holes in the top of the biscuits, though, eh? Why hmm, do they put the holes in the top of the biscuits? Hmm? Not the big hole in the top of the jammy dodger. Not that one. No. <laughs> put that from your mind now. No. Joe Brown, put that from your mind. The big <laughs> hole in the jammy dodger. Hmm? Yum, yum. Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> yum, yum. No, I'm talking about the little tiny holes. Hmm? The little tiny holes in the top of the rich tea. Hmm? The little tiny holes in the top of the bourbon. Hey, the little tiny holes in the top of the poor, anemic, albino cousin of the bourbon, the custard cream, the poor... 
<laughs> Why do they put the little tiny holes in the top of the biscuits? Hmm? You, go and find out. <laughs> go, you, Hobbit, you, go. <laughs> yes, Billy Boyd, the actor, the Hobbit Pippin. Mm. Hey, you're probably sitting there looking at me thinking, oh, it's Gollum, it's Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, my precious. My precious. Uh, I could have had that part, couldn't I? I could have had it. I feel bad losing the part, but even worse, losing it to Paul Daniels, of all people. I don't know. <laughs> now, my nan, she had, uh, yes, she had two left feet. Yes, not ideal. Uh, the upside was she was able to steal shoes from outside Dulcis. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably like me, you divide people into two broad groups, and cats and snakes according to their personality traits, right? <laughs> we, all, we all do it, don't we? The cat, the cat, and the snake according to the personality traits. And if you like, uh, I can allocate you which broad group you fall into. Uh, Wendy Peters. Of course, Scylla Brown from, from Coronation Street, isn't it? Hmm? Mm -hmm. If you like, put your purse away, darling. It's included in the ticket price. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I can allocate you which broad group you fall into, the cat hmm? or the snake, according to you. If I could just ask you one or two questions, get to know you a bit better. All right, so your name's uh, Wendy Peters. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Do you have a middle name? Louise. Uh, Louise, OK, short for? <laughs> right, now, Wendy, uh, all the time I'm assessing which is she, cat mm, mm, or, or snake. Uh, you, obviously, you're an actress now. Did you have any other jobs prior? Plenty, but a waitress. Waitress, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, so she's nuggets, mm, nuggets. Mm. <laughs> Candy for people. Jimmy, your dinner's ready. Your dinner's ready. Cat or the snake, all the time I'm assessing. And. <laughs> Do you, do you have a favourite colour, Wendy? Do you have a...? Blue. Blue? Favourite colour, blue. Cat or snake? Was a waitress, middle name Louise. <laughs> Wendy, if you had to choose, where would you rather sleep? In a big wicker basket with a lid or in front of a nice hot fire? <laughs> hey, what you want to do, right, you want to go into the shop wearing a pair of novelty shoes in the shape of keys. Hmm? <laughs> He doesn't know whether to repair the novelty key-shaped shoes <laughs> or cut you a pair exactly the same. You've got him! <laughs> You've got him. Uh, so I think uh, someone's got a question, haven't they? Is it uh, Rick? Rick Parfit? Look, it's Rick Parfit from, from Status Quo. Hello, there. Hmm? Hello, Rick. How are you? Hiya. I just wondered, how's Nan? How is Nan? Yes. Oh, <laughs> goodness, someone had told him. <laughs> <laughs> She's dead. She's dead. <laughs> she, she died, Nan. Yes, she'd been ill for a while, yeah. She was run over by one of those road-sweeping vans. You know what I mean? <laughs> the road with the revolving... Hmm, you've seen them. She was run over by one of those. Uh, and, you know, I, I went to pick her up from the hospital and I, I hardly recognised her. Yeah. I'd never seen her with a centre parting before. <laughs> Wanted for Nan, right? We wanted the name Nan, spelt out in flowers, right, along one side of the coffin, right? It's a nice touch. So we went along to the bloke who's got all the different names growing there, and uh, <laughs> and would you believe it? He's run out of Nan. <laughs> well, think about it. It's his top seller, isn't it? Nan. Isn't it? <laughs> He's jostling up there with Mum, isn't it? The two. <laughs> uh, so he said to us, look, uh, have a look round, see if there's uh, another name that might do. You know, obviously, some of the less popular names he's, he's got a lot of, you know. Uh, for instance, he had a whole field of uh, Hitler. Uh, <laughs> he was a bad man, wasn't he, Hitler? Hmm? Oh, have I gone too far? <laughs> <laughs> hey, the thing is about Hitler, Hitler is a bad man. Winston Churchill, he's a good man. But if you're in a balloon with Hitler and Churchill and you're losing altitude... <laughs> I don't make the rules up, do I, you know? <laughs> so what we did, right, 
<laughs> there was a Dean spelt out in flowers, D-E-A-N. We bought that, right? There was a Damien, D-A-M-I-E, and we bought that, right? Uh, we got the A-N off Dean, and we added that to the N of Damien, right? Do you see what we've done? Hmm? We've got it. We've got it. Nan, spelt out in flowers, down one side of the coffin, but we've got enough letters left over, but down the other, I am dead. <laughs> Better. Winston Churchill or Adolf Hitler? There's only one way to find out. Fire! You've all seen them out to the right, down. Ooh, dropped it. Mm, and back. Mm, out mm, to the right, down. Ooh, mm, dropped it. Mm, and back. Mm, out to the right, down. Ooh, dropped it. Mm, and back. Oh, the staff in Dixons, really. Oh. Mm. They're frightened of technology, aren't they? <laughs> the staff in Dixons, fr they don't understand the merchandise. Mm. How much are the singing handbags, boss? It's a radio cassette. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> How much are the musical boxes that take the big silver coins? <laughs> it's a CD player. <laughs> Didn't you go on the course? <laughs> you know you're in trouble in Dixon's when he says, uh, sorry, sir, I can't serve you because uh, there's a little tiny bird trapped in your visa card. Look. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a little bald man with a beard. He's smiling. No, he's not. He's smiling. <laughs> <laughs> never say never. Oops, said it twice. <laughs> 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 You're watching BBC One. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't believe that anyone would be phoning at this. <laughs> Can you believe that anyone might be? <laughs> hello? Oh, hey, hello, Paula. It's Paula Radcliffe. Yes. <laughs> well, where are you, darling? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Another time, another time, another time. <laughs> Wendy, when you're threatened, do you tend to arch your back or fan up the loose skin around your neck? <laughs> <laughs> now, my mum, she got her hair caught in the knitting. Yeah, she ended up knitting herself a balaclava she can't take off. <laughs> <laughs> My milkshake's bringing on the boys to the yard. Their life is better than yours. I can teach you, but I have to charge. I do make a small charge for that service. <laughs> I have a small overhead. <laughs> but you know, a little bit of fun. What you can do, right? Even if you haven't got a baby, when you go out, book a babysitter anyway. <laughs> Even if you haven't got a baby, you book a babysitter anyway. And on the way out, you say to the babysitter, in about uh, half an hour's time, would you just check on the baby? <laughs> <laughs> Even better, what you do, you write on one of the doors in marker pen, you write, baby's room, right? You put a cot in there, you ruffle the sheets up, hmm? you leave the window open about that much. <laughs> a little rope ladder. <laughs> <laughs> You get home, you say, what do you mean the baby's escaped? <laughs> Give me 50 quid, we'll forget all about it. What do you say? <laughs> hey, hey, guys, mm, gals, remember when they allowed calculators in the maths exam? Mm? Oh, the excitement. <laughs> calculators in the maths exam. I can't believe my luck. What do you mean we've got to show the working out? Mm? Mm? <laughs> they give with one hand, they take with the other, don't they? <laughs> Well, I asked my mum for the Casio PF100. Yeah, it's a lovely calculator, I think you'd agree. Uh, but... <laughs> yeah, but she bought me the Casio PF200, which, as you may know, is an electronic organ. <laughs> Mummy! What are you going up to do that for? So there I am, in the maths exam. Hmm? <laughs> Yeah, well, she's bought it for me, you know. I can't let it go to waste, can I? Mm? Uh, there I am, in the maths exam. Question one. <laughs> Qu 
question two. <laughs> question three. Paper, miss, more, <laughs> more, more paper. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Forgive me tonight if I appear smug. Yes, because uh, for lunch today uh, I made myself a rice pudding. Yeah, and I know straight away you're thinking, wait a minute, you, you make a rice pudding, the skin tends to bake on to the inside of the pot. Mm, and you're absolutely right. Uh, <laughs> so before I came out tonight, I. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I put that pot into soak. So, <laughs> forgive me if I appear smug. <laughs> when I get home, one quick wipe, that's all it'll take. <laughs> oh, in a funny sort of way, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> so... <sighs> oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Just saves me a little job later on, you know. Uh... <laughs> can tread on its feet and punch it remorselessly about the face, but there are no real winners in a swan fight, are there? <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know whether you've seen the musical Joseph. You seen that one, Joseph? Yeah, some have, some haven't. It's, it's about what I expected. Uh, <laughs> if you haven't seen it, Joseph, it's a fantastic idea for a show, right? Get this. It's all about a man who's lost his coat. <laughs> <laughs> what a fantastic idea for a show. Hmm? Well, where did you see it last? Well, I can't remember. Well, did you have it in the club last night? Well, yes, I had it in the club last night. Well, did you have it in the minicab on the way home? Well, now you come to mention it, no, I... I didn't have it in the minicab on the way. <laughs> well, I'll give them a ring in the morning and see if they've had it handed in. Yes, that's what I'll do. I'll give them a ring in the morning and see if they've had it handed in. Oh, set to music. It's a wonderful idea. <laughs> now, Dad, my old dad, he used to run a sweet shop for a while. Yeah, and he used to reckon you could tell a lot about someone from what sweets they bought. For instance, someone who bought a Mars bar, flash swine, not to be trusted. <laughs> Someone who bought a curly whirly, work shy scum. <laughs> well, the shop closed down. <laughs> People don't want to hear that sort of thing when they're buying sweets. <laughs> I won't even need a scourer when I get home. I won't even need <laughs> one quick white with a J. Oh, a little bit of sif on it, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> In a funny sort of way. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> See, if you drop a Bible from a height. You can kill a field mouse. <laughs> so maybe the Bible isn't all good. <laughs> yeah, I can't help thinking that if Jesus had smartened himself up for the court appearance, things might have turned out very differently. <laughs> <laughs> only takes a minute to put a comb through it, doesn't it? <laughs> only, only put a tie on, you know. Lose the beard. <laughs> yeah, if you want to keep your teeth warm, get a scarf like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> and my mum... She had a system for feeding us, my mum, yeah. The system she used was the scoop-chop system, right? OK, so up until the age of five, we were allocated one scoop of mash, one chop. From the age of five to ten, we were allocated two scoops of mash, one chop. And from the age of ten onwards, you could be 16, you could be 60, you were allocated two scoops of mash, two chops. That was the ceiling level. Right? <laughs> you couldn't go any higher than that, right? So you can imagine we get to about 30, 34. We fancy a bit more mash. 
Is that so wrong? Hmm? Is it so dirty? Hmm? Is it so bad boy, dirty boy in your bed? So what we did, one night, one night, one night, move it on up, move it on up. What have you done today to make me feel proud? Yes. Miss, Miss Heather Small from, uh, from M People. It's a gift. It's a gift. <laughs> one night, we snuck into Mum's kitchen and we substituted her scoop for one ever so slightly larger. Not so she'd notice. We got an engineer in with a lathe. <laughs> we took a tiny slither of aluminium from the scoop. But that night, we're getting ever so slightly more mash. Hmm? The night after that, we snuck into her kitchen. We substituted that scoop for one ever so slightly larger. Not so she'd notice we got an engineer in with a lathe. That night, we're getting ever so slightly more mash. And then after that, we snuck. We substitute the scoop for one ever so slightly larger. Not so she'd notice that night. <laughs> <laughs> Until finally, she's doling out mash from a scoop the size of a paddling pole. Mm. 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 She's employing two small boys to start work at seven in the morning. Peel and mash, peel and mash, peel and mash. But to be honest with you, it was too much mash. <laughs> Well, we're only getting two chops, remember? You know. <laughs> the the chop-mash ratio was all wrong. <laughs> so what we did, we snuck back into that kitchen and we substituted that huge scoop for one ever so slightly smaller. Not so she'd notice. We kept all the scoops in a lock-up garage. <laughs> and gradually, over the weeks and months, we worked our way all the way back down. But in fact, we were so sick of mash, we had a few made even smaller. Yes. <laughs> so after a while, we fancied a bit more mash. We'd go a little bit larger. Mm. Then the memory of the mash sickness would return. <laughs> we'd go a little bit smaller. <laughs> then we'd go a little bit larger. Then we'd go a little bit smaller. <laughs> then we'd go a little bit larger. A little bit smaller. A little bit larger, smaller. But you know, in the end, we settled on that original mash scoop. Well, Mum knows best. <laughs> no. I can't believe that anyone's phoning at this time. I can't. He mm? Hello? Hola, Mum. Yes? Now, I haven't left it. I've put it into soak. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I was looking forward to that at all. <laughs> so, what we wanted for Nan's funeral, we wanted that beautiful gospel number. You know the one? Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus was. When Jesus was. Oh, when he was. When Jesus was. All my sins away. Oh, happy day. But there was a clerical error at the crematorium. <laughs> Instead, as the coffin disappeared through the curtains for the last time, what we actually heard was... Monday. Happy day. Happy day. Saturday. What a day. Rock and roll with you. These days are out. My happy days. Which was far from ideal. <laughs> now, I don't know if you've seen these here. Hmm? You got these? Hmm? You got these where you live, these, uh, hmm? Hey, the large cardboard mittens, you got those? <laughs> hey, 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 old folks. Hmm? No, of course not, of course not. It's a shredded wheat, isn't it? Hmm? Hmm? Oh. Hmm? <laughs> oh, a ripple of excitement passes through the crowd. <laughs> Is he gonna hand them out? <laughs> oh, I wish I'd sat down the front now. <laughs> No, I'm not going to hand them out. Uh, <laughs> just a little bit of fun, what you can do. I don't know if you've ever uh, tried this. Uh... <laughs> what news of biscuits? What news of biscuits? Mm. More door, more door. <laughs> Minus tirith, more door. Minus condor, Minus tirith, condor, more door. <laughs> 
haven't got any, uh... Do we have any... <laughs> Do we have any vegetarians in at all? Any vegetarians? Yeah. Uh, it tends to be the same touchy-feely bunch that go on about the environment, isn't it? Hmm? <laughs> it tends to be the same touchy-feely bunch. <laughs> the vegetarians that go on about the environment. Well, maybe there'd be a bit more environment about if you weren't eating all the plants. <laughs> I mean, the Venus flytrap, he's a plant, he eats meat, right? He hasn't got a problem with it. <laughs> he's a plant and eats meat. Where does that leave you? <laughs> but, you know, I do think that air fresheners must be very confusing for blind people, don't you? <laughs> yeah. The air fresheners <laughs> very confusing for blind people. Uh. <laughs> Pine forest? I thought this was a loo. What's going on? <laughs> Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Look inside. Yeah, not as popular as they used to be, are they? <laughs> Anyone in from London? Anyone in from... <laughs> You've been murdered yet? <laughs> He's rough, isn't he? He's rough. Yeah, yeah. You know what I blame the increase in the crime for? I blame the mobile phones, right? The increase in the number of mobile phones. If you think about it, with more mobile phones about, right, there's fewer phone boxes, fewer places for Superman to get changed in. <laughs> <laughs> He's running around. He's having to get changed in portaloos. <laughs> Is that what we want? Is that the sort of society you want? Where Superman has got to stand on his shoes to get changed? <laughs> Do you know the, uh, you know the white plastic uh, doll's house garden furniture that you get free with the home delivery pizzas? You know the white plastic <laughs> doll's house garden furniture that you get free with the home delivery pizzas? I could get in the table. What's that? <laughs> They're not making enough chairs, are they? <laughs> the ratio chairs to table should be at least four to one. <laughs> I've been low. Yeah, I've been a bit, uh, a bit low this week. Uh, yeah, my wife left me. She's, yeah, she left me. Uh, yeah, thank you for that sympathy. She, uh, I say wife, we never actually got the papers through from the Philippines in the end, but... Uh, <laughs> I remember... <laughs> I remember the first time... <laughs> I remember the first time we met, right? She was wearing this beautiful off-the-shoulder outfit, right? off-the-shoulder, figure-hugging, down to the ground, with a zip running from the top right down to the bottom. Oh, it was a sleeping bag, in fact. <laughs> she was perfect for me. See, I like gardening. She shared my interest in gardening, but also had a foot in the shape of a trowel. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine... Imagine my dismay when I got home the other night and found her in bed with all seven Doctor Whos. <laughs> <laughs> she said technically it was one man. <laughs> So a friend of mine, he said, I'll tell you what, he said, I'll tell you what, I'll fit you up with a rich widow. He said, yeah, I've got a rich widow friend of mine. So I went out with the rich widow on a blind date. We had a lovely evening, right? She invites, and she invites me, or invites me, invites, <laughs> invites, <laughs> Graham Garden, Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> she invites me back to her place, right? We get in there. She says, I'm just going to go and change into something a bit more comfortable. Hmm? While she's gone, I look up. I noticed all these balloons full of blood hanging from the ceiling. I thought, ooh, that's odd. Uh, <laughs> has Lawrence been in? Um, <laughs> half an hour later, she comes out, she's completely naked, except for one of those musical socks. You know the uh, musical socks that like you get at Christmas? Hmm? The, uh... <laughs> I'll just save the battery. She's got a broom handle with a nail sticking out, right? She bends over, she activates the sock. There's a little dance. She bursts one of the balloons full of blood. She hands me the broom handle and says, Go on, your turn. Well, I, I made my excuses and left, but... <laughs> <laughs> the next day, I phoned that friend of mine. I said, That rich widow. He said, Widow? No, 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 no. Weirdo. 
<laughs> Tim Rice, Tim Curry, what is it about the name Tim that suggests Indian food? <laughs> hey, little girl, what's your name? Away you go in. Oh, you're a father. I do beg your pardon. She looks older. <laughs> Well, what better now than a little bit of Louis Armstrong, Wonderful World on the Bugle? Hmm? <laughs> Louis Armstrong, Wonderful World on the Bugle. See, my old dad, he always used to say to me, always fight fire with fire. And that's why he was thrown out the fire brigade. <laughs> Louis Armstrong, Wonderful World on the Bugle. You see, Nan, before she died, she had a tattoo done of the British Isles all over her body. You say, oh, that's a little bit strange. You say what you like about my Nan, but you always knew where you were with her. <laughs> Louis Armstrong. Wonderful world. On the bugle. Here we go. I see trees are green. <laughs> and, myself, and I think to myself... What a wonderful world. Louis Armstrong there. Oh, oh. I have an amazing gift of uh, memory. Yes, I'm able to remember every single meal I've ever eaten since 1972. Yeah, since I became aware. Uh, <laughs> someone could perhaps suggest a year. Anyone? Uh, Frank, you've got your hand up. Yeah, 1977. 1977, Jubilee year. Uh, and the month? Um, February. February 1977, Jubilee year. Yes, I've got it. And the, the date? The 15th. The 15th of February 1977. Two scoops of mashed two chops. <laughs> Someone else got a question. Al Murray, I think, is here, the face of ITV One's Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> you was robbed. <laughs> you was robbed that night. Uh, <laughs> hmm? you, uh, you got a question for Harry, Uncle Harry? Where's Stufa? Where's Stufa? No, I, have, I haven't seen him all day. Has anyone you seen? Uh... Oh, Lordy, your trouble's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lordy, now your trouble's so hard. I'll see if I can see him, Al. All right, I'll see if I can see him. Nobody know my trouble, God. Hold on. That's enough, Stu. That's enough. Whoa, Mr. Harry, I do like Moby. <laughs> <laughs> we all like Moby, of course we do. How, how are you doing, Stu? Well, uh, I was out last night. Uh, my tongue is so dry today. It's dry. Well, uh, well, pop it out. Let's have a look at it. Hmm? Go on, let's hit pop it out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Now, uh, some of you up the back there, you probably can't see Stu for terribly well. He's only small. So we have got a slightly bigger version. <laughs> made. I had that made up. I thought they'd seen down the front. All right. Go! Yeah. Oh. Ah! Yes. can't you do anything right? I told you you shouldn't have been in. Hmm? Now, Wendy, do you tend to like to eat food out of a tin that stinks, or <laughs> do you like to dislocate your jaw and swallow small mammals whole? Uh, I believe there's a question for, for Stufa. Has someone got a question? 
Tonk, you've got one? I do, Harry. Uh, I think we'd all like to know, how, how come is Stufa blue? How come is Stufa blue? <laughs> Him. Hmm? I, I certainly put that. Why are you blue, Stu? Well, it's uh, a little bit embarrassing, Mr. Harry. Uh, well, just whisper it. Well, your, your mother, yes. <laughs> With a smurf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, Stu and I, we've actually come up with a uh, with an invention. Uh, that's it, Stu. For you, help. Um, <laughs> it's the vinegar duck. Right? It's the vinegar... What it is, we're looking for... Back. Pass that round, uh, Philippa Forrester. Would you mind passing that round? <laughs> God bless you. Uh, we're looking for back, because it's the vinegar duck. Um, basically, what it is, you know when you've got a nice piece of fish? Yeah, a nice piece of fish. <laughs> you can get vinegar on top of the fish, can't you? Yeah, you get vinegar on top of the fish, no problem. But <laughs> it's very difficult to get vinegar underneath the fish because of the shape of the nozzle. So what we've done, we've got an attenuated nozzle on it. The attenuated... A nozzle on it. Uh, <laughs> and we're, as I say, we're looking. I'm a little bit nervous about passing that out, to be honest, because uh, last time I came up with an invention, uh, I wrote it on a bit of paper, passed it around, uh, I never got the bit of paper back. Yes. Three years later, Microsoft worked for Windows. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I heard about. Yes, yes. Tom Baker was the worst, he was all over her. Uh, <laughs> No Peter Cushing, then? No, he doesn't count. He was only in the films. <laughs> so, uh, so she booted you out? Yes. What happened? Well, I, I went round to her place. I should never have gone round, really. Uh, I brought my hand up from down by my side. It's shaking. My life is crashing before my eyes. I turn the palm over to face the skies. I bring my hand up to under her chin and let her aside. Meanwhile, she brings her hand up to where my hand's resting. And suddenly, she's got my arm behind my back in a half Nelson. She's shouting, get down, get down, Harry Sands. <laughs> Try your eyes, babe. I know it's hard to take, but her mind has been made up. There's plenty more fish in the sea. Try your eyes, babe. I know you want to make her see how much that pain hurts. You've got to walk away now. It's over. Sorted. Respect you. Stephen and ladies and gentlemen. Of course, married to John Inman, isn't he? Married to John Inman. <laughs> now, I find the best place for children's shoes are uh, bouncy castles. <laughs> 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 but first, first we were hunter gatherers. We learned to collect nuts and berries from the woodland floor. Then we learned how to eat another's kill. We would eat the raw meat; the blood would drip. Then we learn how to kill for ourselves with primitive spears, bows, arrows. We eat the raw meat, the blood drip. Then we discover fire. We learn how to cook the meat. And then my parents separated and we were taken into care. <laughs> <laughs> Who likes cats? You like cats? Hmm? Emma Noble, you like cats? Yeah? Have you got a cat? 
No, well, get a cat then. Is that too easy? <laughs> You like cats? Hey, you like... Oh, Miss World, you like cats? Hmm? Um, not really, actually. You don't like cats? Since one bit me, I'm a little oh, bit afraid so, of them. Yes, so you don't like cats. It hides an irrational fear of cats. Am I right? Yes, yes you are. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you, Miss World. I'm going to desensitise you to this irrational fear of cats you have. Come, <laughs> join me now. Give her a big day. Miss World. Isn't she Miss World, of course. It's not a, it's a stage name, is it? It's not your real name. <laughs> OK, now, uh, presumably when you become Miss World, they warn you about Bruce Forsyth. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's, a, he's an alpha male, right? He's, he's touring the building as we speak, right? Yeah. yeah, he's got off with every Miss World since 1909. <laughs> Even Edward the Seventh, working as a team. <laughs> Take Lily Langtree, you have Ellen Terry. Now, <laughs> what I'm going to do for you, Miss World, what's your, what's, what's your real name then? Rosanna. Rosanna, short yes. for? OK, Ros we've been through that. Now, <laughs> if you don't mind, I will re refer to you as Miss World. OK. For the purposes of this cat desensitization. What I'm going to do, over four stages, Miss World, I'm going to introduce you ever closer to a cat until we've eradicated it's irrational fear. OK. Here's the cat. You met him earlier. He was on a chair then. <laughs> so let's get on with the cat's desensitization process and stage one. I'll bring him a little bit closer. <laughs> you happy with the proximity of the cat? You happy with that? I am. Yes, OK. And back. <laughs> <laughs> we now move on to the second stage. Of the cat desensitization process. He comes a little bit closer. You happy with that? Yeah. You happy with the proximity on the cat? Yeah. Okay. And back. <laughs> now move on to the third stage, the penultimate stage of the cat desensitization process. You're doing so well, you really are. He <laughs> comes a little bit closer. Final stage of the cat desensitization process. And look, he beckons. He beckons. <laughs> You've got to come to him. You've got to do some of the work now, Miss Will. That's it. Come closer. Mm. Let him just touch you. Mm. Let him just lick your face. <laughs> Let's look at this for a moment, shall we? There you are, Miss World. Me. Stroking your face with my finger through a plastic cap. <laughs> now, you're cured, Miss World. Go back to your seat. Thank you. Go back. <laughs> and that isn't entertainment. I don't know what is. That's all from us. Thank you very much. Good night.
just can't, I just can't control my feet. I just can't, I just can't, I just can't control my feet. Sunshine, moonlight, good times. Yeah.